Ken and Shiggy, you talked uh, about some of the depth for Harvard and and, uh, and building towards the future to ensure continued success, not only in the Ivy League, but also here at uh, NCAAs. About that depth, how about yourself adding to the depth of the senior men's foil? And, uh, you know, right now you got four guys ranked in the top ten, uh, three guys ranked in the top four, right. uh, all of whom are world medalists, world number one, uh, Olympians, you name it. You now, uh, after concluding your NCAA career last year, kind of adding to that mix. What do you uh, foresee with yourself as far as continuing to, to compete? We'll see. You know, I think after after each Olympic cycle, everyone is wondering what they're going to do with their fencing careers, depending on you know for those four guys how they perform and and how their bodies feel, how their minds feel. So um, as of now, you know, I think it's still an open question as to what myself what I'm going to do and the, the, those guys, you know, with their careers. But uh, if for for everyone involved, especially those guys. If they decide to keep going, they'll continue to be at the top of the sport. They've established themselves as the premier men's foil fencers in the world. I know, you know, speaking to other fencers from other countries, that they are not only legit medal contenders individually, but the strongest and most versatile and diverse team uh, out there on the circuit. So, it'll be, uh, it's an exciting future for men's foil in the United States. And hopefully after Rio, those guys hopefully continue to keep going. Um, and those of us, you know, who are not on the team but still are on the traveling squad, that we continue to add some depth and some competition to, to those group of guys. Yeah, you talk about the strength on the senior side. Also, the the junior men's foil team, exactly. incredibly strong, incredibly exactly. deep. Um, you know, with with you adding it to that mix, you know, do you, do you hope, like with with next year after the Olympics, to to really make your kind of make your mark on that that senior level and and target 2020 um i think it's i think it's important that those junior guys continue to you know be excited about fencing that when those guys are you know they're starting to go off to college now that they have a good mindset about uh being able to enjoy the four years that they're in college that they'll be able to keep uh, their minds fresh about fencing, that they are excited to hopefully continue their careers after fencing. Um, there, you know, we were once at a period of time where everyone just graduated and quit, and now I think there are more and more people showing that you can hold a steady job and fence, or you can even fully uh, devote all your resources and time to training and really making something out of it. So it's important that you know for the for the future of the squad that those young kids grow into themselves in college and then continue to have a positive mindset about, about fencing afterwards and, and making it, uh, making the United States men's foil team really challenging for 2020 and 2024 and beyond. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thanks.